In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use your new filter wheel and install all of your different filters inside of it. So in my case, I bought the seven position ZWO filter wheel and I got a set of LRGB filters and the three narrow bands, so hydrogen, alpha, sulfur, and oxygen. There's a couple things we're going to need before we get started. First, you should have some type of gloves. Hopefully there's no powder or anything on them because what we're going to be doing is touching the glass here and there's no real threads or anything around the edges. So without these gloves, we might get fingerprints and we don't want that. So make sure you get at least one pair of gloves. You're also gonna to wanna to get a pen and just a little notepad so you can write down where these filters are going. So with all that said, let's open up the filter wheel box here and take a look. And this is the filter wheel itself. You might have a bigger or smaller one depending on how many slots it has, but there's really two sides to it. This is the front side. And all we're really going to be doing today is popping off the front cover here using all these screws, installing our filters. That's really all there is to it. Now inside your box here with the filter wheel, you should have gotten a little screwdriver and we can use this to pry all the screws out of there. And the other thing you should have gotten in here was a set of little screws and these little uh, filter holders basically. This is what you're gonna need in order to make sure that the filters go in without getting scratched. Otherwise, uh, things might not work that well. And if you got the normal like one and a quarter inch or two inch filters, those have threads, so you can very quickly screw them in. And if you have those, you probably don't even really need to watch the video. You're gonna have a much easier time than we will today. So the first thing you wanna do is grab that screwdriver, and then we're going to take out all the different screws here on the front of our filter wheel plate. Once you've taken out all the screws on the plate, you can just pry it right off. And if you look real close, you'll notice that the filter wheel here is numbered from one to seven in this case. It's just gonna depend on the filter wheel that you bought. Some only go to five positions, some might go all the way to eight. Uh, but I did get the seven position filter wheel. And now what I'm gonna do is figure out which position I want everything to be in. There's no right or wrong answer here as far as I'm concerned, but I think what I'm gonna do is put in my LRGB filters first. So we'll do LRGB one through four, and then we'll do maybe oxygen, sulfur, hydrogen, alpha in seven. I think we'll give that a shot and we'll see how it goes. So the first thing you wanna do now, once that cover's off, is pull out, of course, your little pack of filters. In this case, I want a ZWO. You can go with whoever you want, but we'll see how these work in the upcoming videos. In this case, I'm just gonna rip the plastic covering off. And there's our LRGB filters. And the narrow band are gonna come in. Looks like their own individual boxes. And if we open these up, we can see exactly what's inside. Looks like they're using the same little plastic case. So that's what we're working with here. You wanna make sure you don't get everything mixed up. They are labeled, thankfully. Um, but we'll start off with the LRGB filters because that should be the easiest. At this point, I'd recommend putting on your gloves. And also, if you know what you're gonna do, write it down on a little card here. In this case, I think I am gonna do what I said earlier. So I'm gonna write down L, R, G, B, and then oxygen, sulfur, hydrogen, alpha. There might be a better way to do this online according to some people, but that's gonna work fine for us. All right, now there's one other thing you gotta remember when you're doing this, and that is these filters are usually coated. One side has more anti-reflective coating on it. I think that's basically what it comes down to. Generally, you wanna face that towards the camera. So with that in mind, we're gonna inspect these filters, see if we can see which side is which, and then make sure we put it facing the right direction. One other thing you might wanna grab before we get started is a little blower just like this. If you're a photographer, you should have one, and just blow it out. You can see there's a lot of stuff flying around already and we wanna be working with a clean system here. 
Now, the other thing you got to realize is which side of this is the front and the back, because that's going to be important when we're trying to do the coating. So this is the camera side of the filter wheel with all the letters on it. We're going to be putting the camera on this side and the telescope or your camera lens is going to be on this side. So the way it works is we're trying to put the anti-reflective coating facing this way towards the camera, which means it's going to be face down. So hopefully that makes sense. The problem we're going to have is that it's going to be kind of hard to see which side it has the coating, which side doesn't. I guess we'll just have to try and figure that out during the video. We'll see if we can. And just to recap here, we took off the front cover. We've got our, in this case, seven spots for our seven filters. We need this little baggie of spacers. Those are going to go over the filters to help prevent light leaks and also to prevent the screws from scratching the glass. So once you have everything you need, you've blown everything off and you've got your gloves handy, let's get started. The other thing you're going to need apparently is a pair of scissors just because these are in a like vacuum sealed little plastic bag and we need to cut that open. So what you don't want to do is have the plastic drop in the filter holder and now we can slide out our first filter. In this case, this is the L and there we go. There is our first filter there. So what we're going to try and do now is figure out which side is the reflective and non-reflective. And if you'll recall, the reflective coating has to face the camera. The camera is going to be pushed in here. So that means the reflective coating has to go downwards. And if we look at the glass, frankly, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and I'm sure there's quite a few people that have the same issue. So worst case scenario, if you're not sure, you can put it in any way. We can always change it later on and just flip it around. But in this case, I'm going to just guess and say this is the right way. And we'll drop it onto the slot there. It should drop right down inside of there, provide you got the right size filters. Once we've placed it in there, now we can grab our little bag of screws and these little filter holders. Then we'll line up the grooves on the filter holder like so. And now we can take our little tiny screws and screw those in. And it looks like the screwdriver that came to pop off the cover, the it's just a little bit too wide. So I'm actually gonna have to go grab another screwdriver and then we'll continue on. And make sure when you're doing this, you don't lose the screw and it falls somewhere in the filter wheel because that can cause problems. Um, in fact, what I might do just to make sure everything is level is pull that off, pull the filter off, and I'm going to remove this piece here. You can just unscrew it. That should at least help you have a more level playing field, if you will. So there we go, that's more level. I'm going to spray my filter off. And again, I really can't tell the difference to be honest with you in the video. They both have a purple, seemingly, you know, uh, glare resistant coating. So we'll figure out what happens later on. And then we'll drop our little piece down like that grab one of our first screws and then we'll tighten this down. This would be one of those times where it would probably be nice to have the magnetized version, but we'll go with it. All right, well, about 30 minutes later, I'm finally done installing all these filters. I'm going to be honest, uh, I'm pretty frustrated right now. I am not good with little tiny screws and little screwdrivers. These kept falling in here. I was getting really pissed. So I'm done. One thing I want to mention is that for the sulfur and the hydrogen alpha filters, it was very obvious which side was which, because as you'll see here in the video, one side was kind of like clear, the other side had a clear purple tint to it. So purple on one side, clear on the other. And if we look over at ZWO's website, it actually tells us which side is the camera side, which side is the telescope side. So for those two filters, it was fairly easy. For everything else, 
I couldn't tell the difference one way or the other. I might have installed them upside down. You might run into the same issue as well. So my final feedback on the unmounted filters is that I would not do this again. If I was gonna go back in time, I would spend a little bit more money. I would get the two inch threaded filters. And then the more I started thinking about it while I was messing around with this, if there's threaded filters, theoretically they should only screw in one way and that means you don't have to worry about putting them in the wrong direction. I'm assuming that's correct. Like I said, I don't have access to those, so I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments whether I'm right or wrong on that. If that is true, then I would 100%, if I go back in time, just do the threaded filters because this was a huge hassle. I was getting really angry with this thing and uh, it's done now. But one of the problems I had is when I was installing everything, my fingers would smudge up the glass a little bit, even with these gloves. So I have to go and clean the filters with a little cloth. And um, yeah, so that was my experience installing the 36 millimeter unmounted filters in a filter wheel. I do not recommend it. And uh, if you're gonna go down this route, good luck, because you're gonna need it. Uh, so for those of you who are good with small tools and little tiny screws, I'm sure you'll have no problem. But for me, I've got big clumsy fingers and that was a nightmare. All right, so just to recap what we talked about today, and it was kind of hard for me to show everything. I'm doing it all by myself. I got the dual cameras going, but basically just write down which slot you're going to be putting these different filters in so you can assign that later on in your software. Then you kind of got to figure out which side has the reflective coating, which side doesn't. For me, I couldn't tell the difference until I got to the sulfur and hydrogen alpha. Provided you can do that though, you just plop them down, get these little black uh, plastic pieces, lay those down, line up the holes, then get your little screws and screw them in. The screwdriver that came with it did not seem to work, so I had to grab one from my kit and that was able to tighten everything down. Once you finally get all your filters installed, grab your little blower, blow it out best you can. You know, ideally you hold it upside down when you do it. Also, get it from this end because you can just move this wheel manually with your finger. And uh, I'm gonna go through, blow everything out from the back end, and then finally I'm gonna get a little microfiber cloth and rub them down and hopefully that doesn't mess them up at all but uh, there's just some smudges and things now then when i'm done with all that i put the little cap on grab the screws tighten it down then at that point we can finally attach our camera and get to the more advanced stuff but uh, hopefully i at least showed you how to do this somewhat <laughs> and if you haven't bought your filters yet maybe now you'll realize that the unmounted filters are a huge hassle potentially anyway and if you found that it's going to be a problem consider getting the one and a quarter inch or the two inch threaded filters, and that'll save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. That's all I got for you today, and I'll see you guys in next week's video.